This is video two of a three-part series where I show you how to create an index in Microsoft Word to put at the end of a document. In the first video, I went through the process of marking the entries that you want to include in an index and then build that index. And that's all found on the References tab in the Index group. First, we mark the entries using this dialog box here. And then we built the index using the Insert Index here. Now in this video, I want to show you an alternative technique. It's a technique that not a lot of people use because they don't know it's there. It's not really that obvious in the set of tools they give you at the top here, but it gives you a lot more control over building and maintaining your index. We're gonna use what's called a concordance file, and instead of marking and then inserting the index, we're gonna use this insert index twice. Now this is what a concordance file looks like. It's just simply a two column table that you create in a separate document that you then refer to from your main document. Now the first column, the left-hand column here, contains all the entries that you want to mark within the document. So the places you want to record the page numbers for that are then going to appear in the index. The right-hand column shows you what's going to appear in the index. When you place all your index entries in a separate document like this, it makes it a lot easier to maintain. There's none of the clutter here of those XE index entries that we saw before and you can see in an instant where you're at. Again, I've used four color codes here to demonstrate four different things. If you remember, the indexing process is case sensitive. So the concordance provides a really neat way to capture all those different variations with less chance of missing something. So where you've got single versus plural, where you've got lowercase versus uppercase, and where you have all the different word variations that often occur within the document. All those situations can be picked up grouped together, lumped together if you like, under the same index entry. So look at the green section first of all, these are standalone entries. So what you see that gets marked in the document is exactly what appears in the index. So these pretty much are one on one, what you see is what you get. This next colored section deals with a different case. So you can see there's a franchise there with a lowercase f and a franchise there with an uppercase f. Both of those are gonna create marked entries within a document in a minute but they're both gonna be categorized under one entry in the index, franchise with a capital F. In the blue section, you can see in the left-hand column here, all the different word variations, trademark, trademarks, trademarking, trademarked. And again, the same four with uppercase T at the beginning. All of those are gonna get marked within the document, but they're all gonna get categorized under one index entry, trademark with a capital T. The last three here, we're gonna replicate what we did in the first video. So 3DS, Switch, and Game Boy are three different types of console. So in the index, we're actually gonna create a main entry called console with a sub entry, 3DS, Switch, and Game Boy. Notice the notation here. It uses a colon character, that's the two dots, between main entry and sub entry. Don't use a comma, don't use a semicolon. Those are common mistakes. Those characters will not work. Only the colon character will work here. Also, a lot of people make the mistake of putting a colon followed by a space. If you do that, when you come to build the index, each of those entries is gonna have an extra space in front of it. So unless that's what you want, don't do it. That's the concordance file, it's called concordance, and we're gonna to refer to that and pick that up from the main document in just a moment. So here we are back in the main document. It's clean, there's no current index. Let's go down to the bottom and take a quick look. Here's the index heading, nothing beneath it. Let's go back to the top again. And I'm also gonna turn on the hidden formatting because that will show us when entries get marked in just a moment. Now, once you've taken the time to develop a good comprehensive concordance, all you need to do is this. On the References tab, we're gonna choose Insert Index. Now, in the first video, we came here as the second step to build the actual index. But when you're using a concordance file, you need to come here as well for step one, because down the bottom is an option called Auto Mark, and when you click on this, it asks you to point to a file. And that file is called Concordance, so let's select that and open. And immediately you can see all the entries that were in that left-hand column in the concordance have created marked entries here, the XE field codes, like we did manually in the first video, but it's happened automatically here. That's what AutoMark does. That's step one complete. So now all we have to do is to go down to the bottom underneath the index heading, place the cursor, and then again under references in the index group, choose insert index again. And then we just build the index exactly like we did the first time. So you can choose your styling down here, choose what you wanna see and where you wanna put it. And when you're done, 
click OK. And that's the index built. You can see how much quicker that was to build from scratch. If you look here, you can see one entry called Franchise with a capital F. That's exactly what we wanted. There's one entry under T, Trademark with a capital T. That's what we wanted as well. And all the page numbers for Franchise and Trademark with all those different word variations and case variations, they're all categorized under the one entry in the index with all its relevant page numbers. Updating the index is just as easy as it was before. So let's go back to the concordance and let's just add one more row to this table. Japan, on both sides, I'm going to save the file. It doesn't matter if you leave it open or close it at this point. So here we are back in the main document. Now we just repeat the process. So firstly, if we choose insert index, choose auto mark, we need to mark the new entries that have been added, choose the same file, concordance, and open that up. If we just go up, just to check that the thing has been marked, we'll find an occurrence of Japan just here. And we can see the XE, the index entry field, has been added for Japan. So now all that's left to do is to update the index. Now updating is exactly the same process as we saw in the first video. If you click it once, it'll go gray. You always get gray shading behind anything that word controls for you, which is always a good thing. At this point, you can either press F9 to refresh or update, or on some keyboards, it's FN, F9. You could also right click and choose update field from the context menu, or in the index group on the references ribbon, you can choose update index. Any of those three will get the job done. Let's just click it up there and you can see Japan has been added now to the index. Now here's the thing. Things that get added to the concordance get included in the updates. If the document gets restructured and all the page numbers change, they get included in the index updates as well. The only tricky bit is stuff that gets removed. Now if you're removing a chunk from your document and you've got an entry in the concordance that says mark this thing and there are none of those things in the document, that's fine. It just means nothing gets marked and nothing gets included in the index. But let's say in the concordance file, you decide to remove an entry. Let's say it's franchise with a capital F. You remove it from the concordance, but you've still got entries that have been previously marked in the main document. And they're still gonna show up in the index. So in that situation, you need to clean house. Now you might be thinking, that's a lot of stuff to go through. That's a lot of stuff I've got to check, especially with big documents, going through and finding particular field codes and then removing them one by one. Well, thankfully, there's a, there's a much better tool you can use to get the job done quickly. It's the standard find and replace, but with a little bit of a twist. So let's pull up the replace tool. Now there's two ways to get there. One is to go to the home tab, go to your find option over here and then replace it directly underneath. That will open up the replace dialog directly. The other way to do it is to press control F, which opens up the find sidebar now. It used to open up the find dialog. So if you're gonna use the keyboard shortcuts, do control H. That's the keyboard shortcut to go straight to replace, bypassing the sidebar. Now I'm sure you've used find and replace before for content, but what we're gonna do here is to use it to search for field codes. Let's get rid of Japan there. Now, if we click more, there's a few options added to the box here. And down the bottom, there's an option called special. And there's all sorts of things you can actually search for here. These are generally hidden information, but Word will recognize them and will be able to find them and do stuff with them. And about halfway down, you'll see field. Now, when you click that, it adds this funny notation into your find what box. It's actually the caret character followed by D. If you wanted to skip the step of coming to this special menu, you can actually type that in directly. It's something you use quite a lot once you know it's there. And to get that funny character, you do shift and six on the keyboard. What this notation represents is it's gonna go through the document and find field codes. That is anything that's enclosed in those braces, those curly brackets that contain field codes. Because there's nothing else after it, it's gonna pick up every single field code in the document. Now in this example, it's fine. The only field codes we have in this document are index entries. But if you've got other stuff like tables of contents, if you're using ask fields, if you've inserted dates, times, or page numbers, or file names, or use conditional logic, all of those use field codes. And so if you were to go through at this moment and your document had those other types of field codes in, it's gonna remove all of those as well. So if you wanna be specific, you can follow this by space, XE, meaning index entry, and we leave the replace box empty. So now it's gonna go through and replace all the field codes, XE field codes, with nothing. So let's go ahead and do that, replace all, click okay, 24 replacements made, and close the dialog. Let's scroll up, and we have a nice clean document. All the field codes have now been stripped away. So the idea is, if you decide to remove some entries from your concordance file, 
so there may be pre-existing entries in your main documents. Wipe down, clean up, give yourself a clean slate, and then you just build the index and mark the entries exactly like we did the first time, which is on the References tab, Insert Index in the Index Group. Step one is to auto mark. That finds all the entries, adds the XE field codes, and then you come into this dialog box a second time, choose all your preferences if you haven't done so already, and then click OK, and that builds the index. It's such a simple technique, but it makes life so much easier if you take the time to prepare that concordance up front. Of course, you can also use that same concordance on other documents if that's relevant to do so. There's no direct link between the concordance file and your main document. So if you decide to rename the concordance file or move it to another location, it doesn't matter. It's only ever used to mark the entries in the document and that's it. No more ties after that. So I hope this video has opened your eyes and given you a few more options. If you're working on large documents, this will be a godsend. And if you haven't used this approach before, why don't you build yourself a quick concordance file? Just mark a few entries using this technique, see how easy it is, and you can always build it up later on. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up underneath here and put a comment in the comment section. I love to hear what people think and I read and respond to every message that comes through there. If you have any questions, put those in the comments too. If you wanna see more videos like this, click subscribe. And if you're really keen and wanna get notified as soon as new videos come out, click the bell and say how you wanna be notified. And that's it for this video. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. There's one more video to go in this series. I'll see you for the next one.